Hello everyone, let's start our new topic for the second quarter and it's all about Earth and Life Science. Again, don't forget to follow, like, and share my YouTube channel, Sir Arthur Dryan. And with that, let me present to all of you the branches of biology. So at first, what can you observe on the first picture? So if you think this is the biggest flower on Earth, actually that's correct. That is what we call Raplesia. Raplesia speciosa is one of the 13 species found in the Philippines also. It's all around the globe. So it talks about botany. Another. So what kind of animal is this? If you think this is Tarsier, that's actually correct. Tarsius cyritia, or the Philippine Tarsier. Small brownish gray mammal. So, this animal talks about the branch of biology in connection with zoology. Now, we have another picture, which is a microbiologist having an experiment or getting some specimen from a certain, a certain virus or bacteria. So, if you think this is microbiology that's actually that is actually correct now let's proceed all right i have here a simple puzzle i have here the following pictures picture plant walling walling philippine tarsier and the philippine eagle so if please try to answer what what is the puzzle all about i'll give you 10 seconds to answer <clears throat> And time's up. If your answer is life science, absolutely, that's correct. Very good, everyone. So, let's discuss life science. Life science studies life in all its forms, past and the present. So, covered lahat po yan. Mula noon hanggang ngayon. This can include the plants, animals, viruses, and bacteria. Even the single cell and even the cells. Life science can be divided into basic science, like for example, the discovery of life processes, such as the cell division, applied science, or the new drug candidate testing in clinical cases, and the trans translational research, or screening a drug compound to treat cancer and using it for medicinal practices. So these are all examples of life science. And what you can see on our picture like for example, the coronavirus, amoeba, and lactobacillus acidopilus. So these are all examples of life science wherein these specimens are part of those processes. Lactobacillus acidopilus is a type of bacteria found naturally in our digestive tract and other places of our body. And it's also one of the most commonly used probiotics to help treat many medical conditions. And with that, let me start with our new topic. The quarter two, which is module 21, evolving concepts of life based on emerging pieces of evidence. Have you been curious of when and where did life possibly start on Earth? During the 1800s, geologists and the naturalists found several forms of physical evidence that confirm that Earth is very old. The evidence includes fossils of ancient sea life on dry lands far from oceans. This supported the idea that the Earth's changed over time, and some dry land today was once covered by the oceans. The many layers of rock allowed the people to realize that rock layers represent the order in which rocks and fossils appeared. Thus, they were able to trace the history of Earth and life on Earth. And lastly, the indications that volcanic eruptions, yung mga earthquakes and erosions that happened long ago, shaped much of the Earth's surface and supported the idea of an older Earth. So, itong mga to ay halimbawa lamang ng mga evidence or evidences na nagpapatunay na talagang ang Earth ay nasa old age na. These are our lesson objectives. Number one, identify the sequence of the events of the history of the Earth on Earth. Number two, name the pieces of the evidence of the evolution of life on Earth. 
And number three, recognize the importance of knowing the history of life on Earth. So I have here a simple my life timeline. This is also present in your in your modules. So timeline of your life, of course, we, it all starts with the day that you were born and the uh, significant events of your life and up to present. So what is a timeline? Actually, timeline is a visual representation of a chronological sequence. When we say chronological, sunod sunod along a drawn line that helps a viewer understand time relationships. Etong timeline na to can be used to refer to things in the past or future or that are purely conceptual. And of course, itong mga timeline sa to ay composed of text and graphics na nagsisilbing infographics that gives more details for the timeline. So why is it important? So bakit siya significant? Significant ang timeline mga ka-learners dahil ito yung documentation ng type ng development o yung mga nagaganap na pangyayari mula noon hanggang ngayon. It also provides a clear history and assisting the viewers, no, tayo mismo, na para maunawaan natin yung nakaraan at yung kasalukuyan. This timeline can also help with management tasks. So I have here a simple timeline of the appearances of the life forms on Earth. So kitang-kita naman po na nagsimula lahat sa meteorites and volcanic eruptions. Then, <clears throat> nagkaroon tayo ng stromatolites. Then, cyanobacteria, eukaryotes, trilobites, reptiles, and the presence of Homo erectus. Ang timeline po, this serves as the evolution of life, the story of evolution over 3 billion years ago. And it shows how microscopic single-celled organisms transformed the earth and gave rise to complex organisms like the animals. By the way, humans are considered animals, the highest form of animals. So let's go, let's make a throwback. 4.6 to 3.8 billion years ago, medyo paatras po tayo, no? Kasi we're tracking the past. So, 4.6 to 3.8 BYA or billion years ago or yung tinatawag natin panahon na Precambrian. There are three types of timelines including the chronological roadmaps and the gun charts. And with this, <clears throat> so ito po yung Precambrian. On this phase or in this period, the early earth is said to be violent because of the meteorites and volcanic eruptions. Punong-puno ng pagbagsak ng eruptions. I mean ng meteorites at pagputok ng volcanic eruptions. With this condition, nagkaroon ng zircon crystals. And according to geology professor Daryl Henry and Paul Muller, sila yung mga expert practitioners of several techniques na nagsasabing ang mga zircons ay pwedeng ma-extract para malaman ang tunay na age ng Earth. They are searching for some of the oldest rocks in the continental crust for the zircons with them and for the clues the zircons contain about the formation of the planet. It can contain a record of some of the earliest history of the Earth. So yung zircon, ito yung talagang naging tool para malaman po natin yung tunay na edad ng Earth. Three point five billion years ago, so nagkaroon ng ganyang formation. And of course, Ito yung tinatawag nating stromatolites. So, itong mga stromatolite na to, importante yan as part of the, earth, of the earth history or the planet's history. Life on earth initially began with pro prokaryotes discovered in sedimentary rock formations called stromatolites. Ang stromatolite ay isang sedimentary structure form ng mga minerals which are precipitated out of the water by prokaryotes in a microbial map. Ang pag-aaral ng stromatolite system ay nag-provide ng model ng biogeochemical cycling, population dynamics, and mineral formation in modern and ancient environments. So meron tayong mga stromatolites sa Australia, sa may bandang Shark Bay. Although most stromatolites are artifacts from the past, there are places on Earth where stromatolites are still forming pa rin. How? 
However, they can be found in several localities na lamang along the margins of Exuma Sound. 3.0 billion years ago. So, ito ay mga cyanobacteria. So, cyanobacteria ay importante because they are once part of the existence which are in the blue-green algae called cyanobacteria. They thrive in hot, cold, salty, acidic, and alkali environments. They are responsible for the oxygenation of the atmosphere and oceans. Sila din ang major primary producer mula noon hanggang sa kasalukuyan para sa oceans. And sila din ang ancestors or ninuno ng chloroplast. Ang chloroplast ay kadalasan makikita sa mga plants. And with that, there are some fish and aquatic animals that present in that time. Cyanotoxins, ito yung mga toxins may directly kill the animals. When a harmful algal bloom caused by cyanobacteria decomposes, it can use up the oxygen in a body of water. At kapag nangyari ito, yung mga fish and other animals that live in water may not have enough oxygen to breathe and may die. Ang large amounts of cyanobacteria in the water can also make it difficult for animals with gills to breathe. Sa mga fresh water, katulad ng lakes and ponds, yung mga harmful blooms are most commonly caused by cyanobacteria, which are a kind of single-celled organism called phytoplanktons. <clears throat> okay, 2.0 billion years ago. So dito man na, naman natin makikita yung appearances ng first eukaryotes and the influx of multicellular organisms noong 1.2 billion years ago. So dito, nagkaroon ng evolution of eukaryotes. Yung unang sinasabing um, eukaryotic cells ay merong nucleus as an internal membrane-bound organelle. Probably 2 billion years ago yun. And of course, ito ay may explain gamit ang endosymbiotic theory. Yung endosymbiosis came about when large cells engulfed the small cell. So, pag um, kinain ng malaking cell yung small cells, nangyayari yung endosymbiosis. The small cells were not digested by the large cells. Instead, sa halip na madurog sila doon, naninirahan sila sa loob ng malalaking cells. At sila ay nag -e evolve para maging organelles. When we say organelles, these are the small parts ng cells. Also, yung energy nagsusupply ito ng, sa loob ng organelles and of course, sa buong large cell. They, become the, they became the mitochondria ng eukaryotic cells. Other small cells were able to use sunlight to make their own food. They shared the food with the large cells. They became the chloroplast ng mga tinatawag nating eukaryotic cells. Alright, next, 500 million years ago, the Paleozoic Era. Actually, it's era. Paleozoic Era. During the 500 million years ago, the Paleozoic Era, it's when the trilobites and the cephalopods became dominant in the ocean, particularly during the Cambrian and Ordovician. So, ano ba ang mga tinatawag nating trilobites? Sila po ay grupo ng extinct marine arthropods that first appeared noon. They died out at the end of the Permian 251 million years ago and sila ay halos na ubos no? 90% ng ganitong species sa earth ay nawala. Yung nasa picture po natin ay isang halimbawa ng trilobite. And during this time also 500 million years ago Ang trilobites po ay importante because trilobites in a variety of ways to help them, the geologists, no, to understand how the earth has developed. One's use is in the relative dating and stratigraphical correlation of sedimentary rock successions. Nagkaroon ng reconstructing past geographies or dinatawag nating paleogeography and past environments or the paleoenvironments. And also in the year of in this period 500 million years ago early Ordovician trilobites from England and Wales 
are unlike those from North America but are also found in France, Spain, Portugal, Bohemia, and North Africa. This is part of the evidences showing that much of the Scotland was close to North America about 500 million years ago and was separated from Southern Britain by an ocean that has been named Iapetus. Now, 251 to 65.5 million years ago, yung tinatawag nating Mesozoic Era, during this period, it's the age of the reptiles na talagang um, naging dominante nung panahon na to. It is divided into three periods. We have the Triassic, Jurassic, and the Cretaceous period. So during the Triassic period, which is all about 251 to 199.6 million years ago, sa panahon na to, um, severe that yung extinction, no? yung Permian extinction event was so severe that entirely new fauna and flora appear in the Triassic. When we say fauna, ito po yung mga iba't ibang uri ng animals na nabuhay. And the flora, yung iba't ibang plants na nabuhay on that time. Mammals and the dinosaurs started to appear in this period during the Triassic period. And during the Jurassic period, which is all about 200, uh, 199.6 to 145.5 million years ago, nagkaroon ng appearances ng Ammonites, ayan po nasa picture natin sa may right corner natin, and the dinosaurs made a huge comeback after near extinction at the end of the Triassic. The first bird fossil and flying pterosaurs showed up in the fossil record. Ayan. So, yan po yung mga dumabas na mga organisms during the Jurassic period. And during the Cretaceous period, 145.5 to 65.5 million years ago, sa panahon na to, uh, ito yung final na panahon ng Cretaceous period. And ito rin yung longest period natin. The expanded coastlines, shifting continents, and the widening oceans created a cooler environment. So, mas lumamig sa panahon na to. Nagkaroon ng presence ng ferns, cycads, and conifers who are still present on the forest floors. But this period marks the beginning of something new. Naglabasan ang flowering plants. One example is yung magnolia plant na nabuhay noon during the Cretaceous period. Alright. Sa panahon ding to, there are around 1,000 species of beech and oak trees. And they are mostly found in the Northern Hemisphere. Kasi nga, mas lumamig, di ba po, sa area niyo. The oldest angiosperm recorded is the Archaefructus lianinigesis found by Jesson and David Dilcher in China. Yan ay 122 million years ago. So, pinakamatandang um, flora na nakita that time. And 250 TYA or 1,000 years ago, dito na nagsimula ang Cenozoic Era. During the Cenozoic Era, Age of Mammals, North America's characteristic landscape began to develop during the Cenozoic. The birds and the mammals rose or rise in prominence after the extinction ng tinatawag nating mga giant reptiles. So, mga ibon na lang at mga mammals na lang ang natira. And, what common in Cenozoic fossils is yung cat-like carnivores and early horses as well as ice age woolly mammoths. Diyan na naglabasan yung mga yan. And the Paleogene has three divisions. Nariyan ang Paleocene Epoch which is 65.5 to 55.8 million years ago. Eocene Epoch, 55.8 to 33.9 million years ago. The Oligo Oligocene Epoch, 33.9 to 23.03 million years ago. So let's talk about the Paleocene Epoch. With this, yung mga dinosaur competitors, na wala na sila, mas marami ang mammals na naglabasan. Ang mga reptiles katulad ng snakes, lizards, turtles, and crocodiles persisted. Nagkaroon na din ng mga bagong halaman na nag-evolve katulad ng pines, cacti, o yung cactus, no? and palm trees appeared. Ang mga flowering plants ay nagtuloy-tuloy lamang 
na mabuhay at mas dumami pa ito. And of course, during the Eocene, or Eocene Epoch, sa India, no, nagkaroon ng slow movement pa northward. Talagang umakit siya kasa, papunta sa Asia. And this force started to push up the Himalayan mountains. Yung mga palm trees natin at yung mga alligators, sila ay nagsimula ng mabuhay sa Arctic Circle. Ang mga birds, nagtuloy-tuloy silang dumami at mas nagkaroon pa ng variety tulad ng penguins, pelicans, ducks, and the gulls. During the Oligocene Epoch, there was a significant increase in volcanic activity, lalong-lalo na sa Europe at North America. One example is yung Yellowstone National Park is a remnant of this activity. So, nasa right side din ng ating screen, no? Yung mga hornless rhinoceros from Asia was the largest land mammal ever to live nung panahon ng Oligocene Epoch. Now, the Neogene has two divisions. So, under ng Cenozoic is yung Neogene. Nagkaroon dyan ng Miocene Epoch, 23.03 to 5.332 million years ago at yung Pliocene Epoch 5.332 to 2.580 million years ago So let's talk about the Miocene Epoch Sa panahon na to mas dumami ang grassland mammals and nagkaroon ng ng multiple stomach suitable for digesting the top grasses There were great mammals migrations mula sa continent to continent no nakakapaglakad na sila naglalakbay na especially mga elephants mula from North America nagmigrate sila sa iba't ibang lugar and of course the Pliocene epoch dito yung mga grassland and savannas nag-expand yan nagkaroon ng cooler but drier climate yung mga armadillos, yung mga ground sloths, opossums, and porcupines, nag-move sila from North America. Ah, pumunta sila ng North America kasi doon talaga suitable yung kanilang, yung kailangan nilang climate. At yung mga dogs, cats, and bears, and horses move into South America. So another, we have the quaternary, yung Cenozoic na hati pa rin siya, no? So, into two divisions. We have the Pleistocene Epoch and the Holocene Epoch. Sa Pleistocene, it's 11.700 years ago to 2.58 million years ago. At yung Holocene Epoch naman is 11.5 thousand years ago up to present. So, let's discuss the Pleistocene. Sa Pleistocene Epoch, the position of the continents was essentially the same as, as it's today. Kung ano nakikita natin sa mapa, sa globo, yun na ang position niyan. This was the time of global cooling and warming with ice ages and interglacial periods occurring about every 100,000 years. There was also significant number of large animals. So nagkaroon dyan ng mammoths, mastodons, saber-tooth, saber-toothed cats, and giant ground sloths. Pero sa ngayon, kaunti na lamang sila, no? Nawala na karamihan, nag-extinct na. And of course, during the Holocene epoch, uh, ito na yung panahon ng tao, the age of man. The vast majority of scientists agree that human activity is responsible for global warming as an observed increase in a mean global temperatures that is still going on. Ang habitat nagkaroon ng habitat destruction nagkaroon ng pollution and other factors are causing an ongoing mass extinction of plants and animal species. Nagkaroon din ng great development sa human knowledge and technology na up to now ay ginagamit natin. Para mas maunawaan ang mga nangyayaring pagbabago, so marami tayong inimbetong technologies. So the importance of embracing the timeline of the appearance of life forms, of course, yung lahat ng epoch na yon, yun ay part ng timeline na nagre-represent ng bawat chapter or kabanata ng story of adaptation ng lahat ng organisms sa Earth. It also helps us to understand 
yung adaptations na yun ay nagpo-provide sa atin ng valuable insights para malaman kung paanong ang buhay ay nakasurvive billion years ago. It also embraces us the timeline. It also informs us sustainable practices by highlighting the intricate relationships between the species and the ecosystem. With this, recognizing the delicate balance that has evolved over millions of years encourages responsible stewardship of the planet, emphasizing the need for sustainable practices to ensure the well-being of the current and future generations. So in short, ang ating summary for this lesson is The history of life on Earth is a captivating narrative that unfolds through the millennia, marked by the emergence and evolution of the diverse life forms. And in conclusion, the timeline of the appearance of life forms serves as a profound testament to the enduring story of evolution on Earth. It embraces this timeline not only enhances our understanding of the biological processes and human origins, but also instills a sense of responsibility towards the preservation of the biodiversity. As we navigate the complexities of the present, the timeline beckons us to, ap to appreciate the beauty of the life's journey, urging us to protect more our Earth and cherish the delicate web of existence that binds us to the vast expanse of evolutionary time. Always remember this, mga ka-learners, the earth is continuously evolving. Man is always evolving. Transformation is always present. Therefore, with this development and improvement, don't forget to protect our mother earth. So mga ka-learners, Let's have our activity cards. For our activity 1, here's the instruction and the activity. Directions arrange the jumbled word to reveal the evidence in the history of life on Earth. Write the answer on the space below the green. So we have here the jumbled letters. And on the right side is the, the meaning or definition of that. So your teacher will give you 2 minutes to answer this. Good luck everyone and for your activity number two from the given statements below arrange them or the following the following boxes to show the origin and the evolution of eukaryotes number the boxes from one to eight one as the earliest so pag susunod sunurin lang natin yung sequence no number one yung pinaka maaga at yung number eight naman yung pinaka present so again two minutes to perform this Mga ka-learners, good luck. And to show our answers, this is our answer card. These are the answers for activity 1. And for our activity 2. Our references, our reference materials. Alright, and shout out to Ma'am Maria Avi Amamangpang for creating this PowerPoint. Thank you so much, Ma'am. Again, don't forget to like, follow, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sir Arnold Ryan. Thank you so much, mga ka-learners, and, and I hope that you've learned a lot. Bye!